I'm sitting by what in the Latin is called Melva neglecta, and typically in the English it's called the common mallow. It's also been called cheeses, and we'll talk about why it's called cheeses in a moment. But is it actually beneficial for healing wounds also? Hey everybody, Chad Cruiser here with Health and Homestead, and this plant right here is almost ubiquitous in North America. It's grown all over the uh, lower 48, even much of Alaska, and through much of Canada, at least the lower half or more of Canada. You can find this simple edible wild plant, and it has just a very simple flavor. You can either eat it raw, so you can just pick it. Uh, if you go too far down the stems, they get kind of woody. You're not going to enjoy that. But the, the leaves themselves are totally edible, and they have these little kind of, uh, I don't know what you'd call them, pinwheels. It's the fruit, really. But they look, uh, some have said it looks like a tire of a tractor and these kind of things. But uh, these little tiny things, these little pea-type fruit is what actually grows on them and those are edible too so you can eat the fruit you can also eat the flowers actually and you can either once again you can cook the cook this or eat these things raw it's really up to you and now but what about this issue of is it actually beneficial to healing wounds you know this this herb and there's kind of a simple distinction between herbs and spices an herb is really just the the part of the plant that is the leaf, that's the herb, and the spice may be some other portion of the plant anyway. So if we're talking just about the, the, the leaf portion at this point, so we talk about the herb, it reminds me of a verse in Psalms 104 verse 14 that says, speaking of God, He causes the grass to grow for the cattle and herb for the service of man that he may bring forth food out of the earth. So, uh, you know, he's made certain things, certain herbs to be of service to us. And could it be that this particular plant is actually beneficial for wound healing? Now, this right here is a, a study talking about the fact that they have actually done research on this, and they have found that it actually was beneficial in the case or in the area of healing wounds. There's some kind of medicinal properties. Now, historically it's been used for this, and now we see that research shows that sure enough, the ancients were act actually right about this. Now, by the way, this plant originally is not from North America. It's a weed that has come over from the old world, and now it's here. And the great thing is, though, it's almost everywhere, so you can both eat it and you can use it medicinally. It has this, uh, I don't know how you say, is it mucilaginous or I'm sure maybe you say it like that or some other way, but basically it makes a, a kind of a, you know, in layman's term, kind of a slimy texture when you add water to it. And so this is, this plant has actually been found to actually heal wounds. Now, I got to be honest with you, the study was once again with rodents or rats specifically. So they actually did, they made incisions in them, poor little guys, and then they used this and sure enough it has a healing ability to wounds. Now, historically, obviously, people have used it for humans, and uh, I don't know of any human studies that have been done, but at least we've seen in animal, in animal research, research that, sure enough, it actually seems to have healing properties. But the great thing is, is this is a perfect kind of edible where if you're out in the hills, you're out in the mountains, or just the lowlands, or I don't live around mountains. I love the mountains, love to live around them, but I, in the area that I live, there are none. But nevertheless, we have plenty of common mallow. Why is it called cheeses? Because that little button, that little fruit that it grows, has been said to look like uh, those little, maybe you've seen those little button cheeses, uh, like a literal cheese, where they kind of wrap something around it. Uh, I guess somebody thought it kind of looked like that, and so they call it cheeses. Not because it has a, a cheesy flavor, it does not. Um, it also can be made, my mother-in-law, she, you know, she grew up overseas in the old world, and sure enough, she actually grew up in Dolma, or wrapped grape leaves, she maybe had wrapped grape leaves. They would actually use these leaves. Now, these leaves right on this one are way too small, but they get bigger and larger ones you can actually use to wrap, like wrapped grape leaves, but instead you'd use this for the wrap. So, check it out, learn more about it, and once you get to know it, it's pretty simple. It's a simple plant to know, and it's a great food to just grab, uh, you know, when you're out in nature. That's the great thing if you're ever camping, and you can actually, you don't have to bring salad with you camping. You can, if you know the wild edibles around you, you can have a fresh salad almost anywhere if you get to know the wild plants. Now, if you like this video, hit the subscribe button. God bless, and have a great day.